Is Reclaimer Amulet mean? Absolutely not. I don't know that it's better than playing a traditional amulet list, but this Reclaimer list is 100% serious. Um, this hand does not have the sauce. I think I'm only getting this. This hand has the sauce. We're keeping this one. Four amulets. <laughs> Why not? I don't think I've ever done this combo with four amulets in play. All right. Today, we are playing Reclaimer Amulet, something that is actually near and dear to my heart, although I can't take credit for like inventing the deck. Obviously, the person who's pioneered Elvish Reclaimer the most is F. Paulus, Fran Pavlouche, and some of you may know him. If not, then you should definitely go check out his channel. He plays some awesome Amulet Titan and other decks as well, not just Amulet. Unlike me, I'm kind of just a Titan degenerate. Sometimes I play other things here and there, but anyways, the main difference between this list and your typical Reclaimer list, and you will you will already be familiar with this if you've ever watched any of my previous Reclaimer content, is I'm not playing the card Flagstones of Trocare. This is the card, the Legendary Land, that lets you replace the Flagstones with a Plains card whenever it dies. Uh, obviously, this pairs very well with Reclaimer sacrificing lands, but I've often thought that this was kind of a... Uh, a strange reliance to be playing in your amulet deck as obviously a mono white land and this deck might as well tap for colorless considering everything that we have costs green and we don't play any white sideboard cards not that we would want to anyways um and that in addition to the fact that it makes you play a bunch of planes cards for example multiple copies of temple garden i mean sure you get the rain but to ramp to ramp but reclaimer is particularly slow when it comes to trying to use it to ramp you're Playing it, hoping it survives, paying two to sacrifice, paying two to sacrifice again, just to try to get up one measly land at a time. I don't know. I've never been a fan of the Flagstones plan, and it's been that way for probably a year or two now at this point. Definitely more than a year, I would say. And I've had multiple 5-0s in the past with a Reclaimer list that plays zero Flagstones, and just recently I was able to do this as well. I'll pull up the tweet and show it to you guys. I guess I have to move the whole thing over here, which is fine with me, I suppose. Okay. So here you can see a previous list that I played that's probably very similar to this. I think the only thing I changed is removing a relic and adding an explosive. I think I moved Besager the main over Breeding Pool and added a second explosive as well. But this is a list I posted on Twitter, and some people were interested in the inner workings of this list and how it seems to play out. So that's why we're here playing Reclaimer Amulet again today. And uh, yeah, without further ado, Let's just jump into match one here. One comment that I get a lot on this deck is asking what the best targets to find with Elvish Reclaimer are. And in my humble opinion, being that I've probably played the person, the single most person that has played the most with just Reclaimers, no flagstones, I personally find that getting Saga, or the Saga, is almost always the correct choice. You can do things like on your opponent's instep, Reclaimer for a Saga, and then in your upkeep, you set a stop and Reclaimer again for a second Saga, and then they'll both tick up the two in your draw stop, so that next turn you'll have a double amulet turn, and you even have the two mana to get started with Reclaimering for a bounce land if you don't have that. So that is generally the absolutely most powerful thing Elvish Reclaimer is capable of. We're definitely keeping this hand, by the way, turn one Saga amulet. Um, I would say that that is generally, like, the goal, like, the just the baseline for Reclaimer in this deck is setting up a turn four, like, double amulet or triple amulet turn. So the other utility of Reclaimer comes from potentially trading with Ragavan, which sounds minimal, but it's not because if our opponent leads on a Ragavan, that can be very bad for us. But also it just lets us search for utility lands like Cavern of Souls or Bajuka Bog and matchups where we need to be a, a slight, slightly more interactive or I guess in the case of Cavern of Souls, less interactive. So this looks like this might be a Cavern of Souls matchup. We'll see. A Wall of Omens is an unusual one. So probably expecting our opponent to play Ephemerates or something. Bounce Land is a fantastic pickup here, meaning we basically just have Lethal on turn 3 here once we get our second Amulet. We might be able to play through some interaction as well, like Solitude, for example. Also, yielding to Amulet is an awful idea here, since we're going to be picking up another copy of that one next turn, and don't want that happening to us. Um, I mean, we could go Azusa into Dryad and uh, still have land after the Dryad resolves to be able to get Titan into play off of the pack next turn anyway. So I don't really see a reason not to play out our dudes here. It plays slightly better around... I was going to say it plays slightly better around, like, Teferi or something like that, but not really, because I mean, if they bounce something here, we're still just comboing them. I don't know. I should stop talking, because I also played my lands in the wrong order. I was supposed to play 
an untapped land and then the growth chamber so that there's no way they could kill Azusa in response to the bounce trigger, and that way we get the Dryad down guaranteedly. But, I mean, obviously, <laughs> never punished, so player gear and brick here and pass. Now, even if our opponent were to Solitude and Ephemerate and get rid of both of our creatures, we then get to untap Summoner's Pack for Titan, play Bounce Land, and just, like, go ham and kill them. So, even though we have Slayer Stronghold in play, probably, I don't know, we'd have to do the math on that. Most likely, getting two Titans into play is going to be uh, pretty good, I would say. Glass Pool Mimic to copy Wall of Omens. That is a hard way to do it. Um, our opponent must have Solitude here, uh, but it doesn't matter because I think they're dead anyways. So we'll float a blue here. We definitely have enough mana to set up Pacting for a second Titan after Triggers of Resolve here. So I'm going to hit five, make sure we're not using any unnecessary yields here. Play out a Bounce Land or two. Probably just two. I think that gives us enough mana to do what we want. And then we're going to search for Bounce Land Tolari West off of our Titan Trigger. And Transmute and get a second Titan and play second Titan and then haste both. Although we drew the Vesuva, so we probably have to Vesuva Slayer Stronghold at some point in this turn. It should be fine. We have plenty of land drops, so it's not a big deal. I'll leave the Growth Chamber in play here as well for a maximum mana value. We'll go ahead and pack here. Get our first Titan of the turn. This is the power of having double amulet. So... Obviously, we didn't use Reclaimer to set it up here, but this is, like, the, the top end of what Reclaimer can set up, so. I'm sincerely hoping that we'll have enough mana in play after searching for another two lands off of our next Titan and attacking with one to be able to pay for double pact. We probably will, but I haven't done any math. I think if there's a strong likelihood our opponent's just dead here, if they maybe don't even have the Solitude, for example, so. Our Titan is going to come into play and get Boros Garrison, and we'll float the red-white, and then we'll play Vesuva Copying Stronghold and untap it twice, and that should be good, so. I guess we could have floated two um, white instead of two blue, potentially. Or I guess we can get Valakut here, like double Valakut, and make red and white using Dryad ability, and then play Vesuva Copy, and it's pretty much the same. But we get Valakuts and play this way. Probably better that way. Dryad letting us tap our Valakuts for white here, of course. We'll float red, red. Then we'll float white, white. Play Vesuva copying Slayer Stronghold. <laughs> Get some Valakut triggers, because why wouldn't we want some Valakut triggers, of course. Save targets upstairs. Ignore those Wall of Omens. We don't care about those 04 creatures. And we win the game. Well, I mean... Like I said, I figured it would be pretty easy, so not much reason to do math in that particular game. We're playing against a grindy deck with Wall of Omens, Ephemerate, probably the Pitch Elemental, so Tracker seems interesting here. Just another thing they have to answer that'll give us some value to match up with their value. Speaking of, Reclaimer should be quite good against them because, like I said, it's just another thing that they'll have to answer. So, although I guess it gives them extra targets for Prismatic Ending, but I don't know how much I care about that. They could potentially be playing... Nah, there's no way they're playing, like, Risen Reef or something. Do we want Dismember for, like, Soul Herder, perhaps? Or, like, they could have, like, sideboard copies of Meddling Mage or something. I wouldn't be surprised. So probably bring in a couple of Dismembers is good. Not probably going to want Bog here, unless maybe we see Renin Six, but I don't know about that. Uh, we can trim... Probably can trim a Cavern. It looks like they're probably more creature dense, but we don't know that for sure. Like, if we were to see Soul Herder or like, Wall of Blossoms or something like that. Like, Wall of Omens by itself could indicate they're just playing Restoration Angel and a Flash Package and not necessarily Creature-heavy plan, in which case they might have Counterspell. I don't know. Probably can trim on Grazers. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I think just cutting all the Grazers and calling it a day is good. Potentially trimming a Cavern, depending on what we see. I don't particularly see a reason to bring in Endurance, but I don't know. Maybe we will want it after this upcoming game. We'll see. Depending on how interactive they are. Got a double amulet draw. We just need to top deck a threat. Just kidding, we have Talari West. Uh, we'll definitely keep this. The question is, when are we playing out these amulets? Opponent moles to five. Uh, that's got to be pretty good news for us, I would say. So if we hang on to these amulets until turn three, we go amulet, amulet, bounce land, dryad, bounce land that puts us up to five. I think we probably have no choice but to play out amulets and risk them getting hit by prismatic, which I think is fine. 
especially since we have two. If the first gets endinged, then we'll just have to play it a slight bit slower, but it's not the end of the world. Saga is not bad. If we play that one, it potentially plays into Teferi. We could play Growth Chamber, Dryad, then Saga Amulet. I don't hate that. Could also hold on to the other amulet. If we play amulet, bounce lane, leave a blue floating, play dryad, and play. We'd have to have another ETB tap land to immediately transmute. That doesn't really work. Probably just. I mean, do we even play the dryad here? It's potentially playing into gust, which I think is fine. I think I want to get the dryad into play. If they prismatic ending on three. We can just top deck a threat and kill them immediately, and if not, we'll probably just transmute Talari West anyways. So here's Dryad and Saga. I guess they could have Force potentially, and we're giving them a lot of Force targets. But <laughs> yeah, it, it, pick your choice of any of these two things, any of these four things. Two of any of these four things is what I meant to say. Saving their fetch lands, huh? Getting basic lands, too. Is there a potential for Magus of the Moon here? All the basic lands, huh? Knight of Autumn to kill one of our things. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Forget Even if they kill Saga, oh, they kill Dryad. Well, if we draw Titan, we can just cast it. Don't. That's fine. We play Growth Chamber. We'll have five, three to transmute, two to activate. Saga's good, so... That's probably the move that I want to make. Sucks to have to pick up Growth Chamber here, but we don't have another Bounce Land, so this is the best we got. Let's us present a threat next turn. So we'll take it. And we'll take our free creature here as well. Could be relevant if we're attacking a Teferi, for example. Also, Stonewall is their Knight of Autumn. They can't get in for the two points, you know? Soul Herder. That would be vaguely annoying. Any ramp spell off the top, like a Dryad or a Zusa, lets us immediately get to Titan if they just tap out for Soul Herder here. And worst case scenario, we just dismember the Soul Herder, so. Aether Channeler. 3-mana 2-1, when it enters the battlefield, either make a 1-1 one, one white bird with flying, return a non-land permanent to his owner's hand, or draw a card. Not a bad card. Guess they just bounced the construct here. <laughs> if they do that, they're probably super dead. And by probably, I mean almost definitely, because we get a third amulet, we have 2 plus 6 is 8, so we'd be one short of playing Titan and going ham. Let me plug in my computer, the battery's low. Pro streamer here, guys. Just never forget that, you know? They bounce an amulet, and we top deck Dryad, stuck in draw step. I guess they have force also? I don't know what this could possibly be. Yeah, bouncing amulet does actually nothing there. Especially since we drew the Dryad, but I don't know, we'll see. I, I feel like we're about to have a repeat of game one here. Definitely play amulet. So we go 7, Dryad down to 4, Bounce Land up to 10, then we can double Titan them, much like before. Seems good. Let me uh, adjust this real quick. Also, our Construct grows to a 4-4, four, four, you know. It's a pretty big game. That was sarcasm, in case you couldn't tell. I'm not very great at communicating sarcasm sometimes. And of course, the importance of getting two Titans into play here is that Playing around Ephemerate, not Ephemerate, um, Solitude is probably a pretty good idea, I would say. If we had a third Key West here, since we already had to use one to transmute in the first place, if we had a third one, we'd be able to get three Titans into play attacking here, but uh, we don't, so. I'm leaving Growth Chamber in play. Sure. If all goes totally south, we'll probably have a Bounce Land left to spare in some of our Titan triggers here, so. Speaking of Titan. Bang. I guess they could have 
subtlety, in which case we're just losing. Um, but, you know. No subtlety. Dodged. Didn't think about it because it didn't matter. Of course. So we'll get Talari West Bounce Land. We'll get the Sanctuary so we can float some extra white here and piece off of Valakut, I suppose. Uh, we have a ton of mana, though. Like, an, a, like a metric ton, you know? Mana, mana, mana. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have Cultivator to tempt me into having to pay for a ton of triggers here. And, uh, clock down. That would be annoying. Titan in play. Valakut Slayer Stronghold. You already know. Now our opponent has to kill Dryad and two Titans. Good luck with that, opponent. I guess we could haste the Dryad and get in with that one as well. I don't really see a reason to, so I'm just going to skip that out, but it's a curious concept. <laughs> we see a Solitude. Evoking Meddling Mage. Interesting. Well, we had that one covered anyways, but... Yep, so they're going to hit one of our Titans here, which is fine, I suppose. Uh, and swing, and I think they're still probably dead here with Valakut, Vesuva copy Valakut, so... Or Valakut Sunhome might also be lethal. There's literally nothing they can do to stop Dryad lethal here, though, so and we have a minimum of six lands, so we are Gucci on that front. And our opponent is hyper super dead, and that is because we played around Solitude, of course, so... And we'll just uh, say yes and let the stack resolve and our opponent will suddenly disappear. <laughs> oh no, we have to get through these amulet triggers. I just always yielded. Something you should usually never do to amulet triggers. But anyways, that means that we are now 1-0. Let's uh, go ahead and get match 2 underway. I wonder if the deck command is working yet. Nope, still not working. <laughs> Great to know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, we're here for match two, so we'll be on the play, of course. We see our first Reclaimer hand, so that's exciting. Uh, Probably not playing it on turn one, though, because playing turn two Dryad is more powerful than playing turn one Reclaimer, in my opinion. Probably just going ahead and fetching Basic Forest. We can play Crumbling Vestige into Dryad on two and leave both lands in play, and then we'll have an extra thing to sacrifice the Reclaimer. I'm liking how this is looking. Also, if we fetch for Basic Forest against our opponent who's playing Blood Moon, then that gives us more opportunity later in the game. So, they mold six. See what we can do with Reclaimer in this match, huh? All right, we'll start on Misty and grab our basic force. Of course, the reason why we're playing a fetch land in the deck in the first place is because it gives us an extra potential Valka trigger with a Dryad in play. We can search for Misty Rainforest and sacrifice it to get a second land entering the battlefield and triggering all those Valkats again. It can be quite relevant if you're trying to play around removal spells that could hit your Dryad and you want to like guarantee you're going to either kill your opponent or kill one of their key creatures like a Meddling Mage or something. So like, Sometimes you just, like, crack a map for a fetch land, play fetch land, then play Dryad and play a land immediately after to trigger Valakuts, and then you have a fetch land you can crack in response if they try to kill it. <gasps> Our opponent's playing Amulet, too. This is the mirror. Oh, we drew second Amulet. I think that we are most certainly going to be winning, especially with the, uh... Oh, I meant to play... I meant to play the, uh... 
amulet with that mana floating and then play the vestige, but oh well. That's okay. We will make do. We'll play Dryad into Bounce Land Amulet Elvish Reclaimer, I guess, since uh, the mess up. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I think because we have Reclaimer, that means that we're going to be able to set up a uh, Talari West by activating Reclaimer in response to Bounce Trigger. So we'll play Bounce, Bounce, and in response to the second Bounce Trigger, we'll sacrifice Crumbling Vestige into Talari West, float to pick it up, and then transmute it, and probably have Titan Mana, I would assume. I haven't done the math. That would be um, 10 minus 2 plus 2. Yeah, we can still transmute and get Titan to play. So we're actually being able to cast Titan on turn 3 here with the second amulet draw because we have Reclaimer. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Unless our opponent had Besage you, which it seems like they don't. So they had a good draw, don't get me wrong, but we had a better draw. Oh, or we could just draw Titan as well. That works, I suppose. And now we're attacking with two Titans, which is more clicking, unfortunately. We don't necessarily have to do that. I could just not. Uh, we can play Bog and float white, white, or play Sanctuary. I think Sanctuary into Second Titan is better, so. I guess Reclaimer is giving us some additional Valka triggers here for, for BM. Standing for bad manners, of course. Pick up Crumbling Vestige because it literally doesn't matter. We'll search with Titan for... T West and Bounce Land and do something similar to what we did in both the games we won in the last match. <laughs> this is why I like playing Reclaimers, by the way. Even though we haven't used them for this purpose, like setting up double amulet like this and letting you play around a lot of things like Solitudes, it's so cool. Like having access to that ability because you're playing the card Elvish Reclaimer is pretty cool. Uh, you know, unless you're like me and you just always draw it, so... Get a second Titan and attack with it. Should be pretty good. Floating extra mana just to make absolutely certain that I have all the mana we could possibly need. We'll get... Let's see, Valakut Slayers is not enough mana to haste both Titans, so I guess we're getting Garrison Slayers here. As if it'll ever load. There it goes. Getting there, you know. That is the one downside of having all these amulets in play is uh, it takes a little bit longer to go through the motions. It's especially annoying when I'm trying to stream because it's not usually this slow when I play, but when I'm overloading my computer by streaming and playing at the same time, you get this kind of effect. So we'll uh, go to combat, swing with everything, including... Nah, we'll leave Reclaimer back for extra Valka triggers, you know, just in case. Our opponent scoops it up. Game two. All right. Well, this is one of the areas where I would have liked to have a third force, which is why I added it to the sideboard. You thought I was going to say we didn't have access to it here, did, didn't you? Isn't that what you thought? And I think that's it. Some would bring in Dismember for killing opponent's Dryads, but that's not what I'm about in this matchup. I think that it's better to be proactive. Force is good because it hits two things at once and slows your opponent down significantly, especially hitting a Saga. But... Uh, Dismember is just playing the waiting game, and I don't like playing the waiting game in this matchup, even on the draw. You trim a cavern and one of the Reclaimers. Reclaimer is good to stick around, but usually it's not fast enough in this matchup because Reclaimer sets up for a really powerful turn four Titans, you know, assuming that your opponent doesn't just force the vigor of your sagas that you're setting up. But uh, usually your opponent's going for turn three Titans anyway, so it's just like a hair slower. Honestly, I'd like to be able to board out more Reclaimers. Maybe it's better to have Dismembers than Reclaimers. I feel like it probably is. What's going up, SRAM? I don't know how to pronounce that name, but it's good to have you in here. I think I like having Dismembers over the extra Reclaimers. This is one of the few matchups I actually do board out Reclaimer in. And uh, we're immediately plagued by having Dismember in our opening hand. Not a card I like to have to play in this matchup, but... Uh, greetings from Columbia. Well, I'm glad that Columbia is greeting me. Uh, this hand could do a lot better. It could do kind of worse, but... I mean, it's not playing into Force particularly badly, and we have Dismember to interact, but we have to map for Bounce Land, which I absolutely don't love. We're also on the draw, though, so we're probably going to hit a third land off the draw. Potentially even play a turn two Dryad. Our opponent mulligan to six. I think I'm in inclined to mulligan that one. Yeah, this hand's better. This hand's definitely better. We might be playing on hard casting Force with this hand. I don't know. Or probably just bottoming the Force and just hoping our opponent doesn't have a Force of their own. 
Definitely keeping. I don't know. Because Force really slows them down and they're on the play. Is it like crazy to bottom a bounce lane and just hope the top deck some lands? I feel like that gives us the most play here. And even if we don't find a land, we still have bounce lane plus amulet and some ramp spells to potentially get to Titan. So just slowing them down with Force could be enough. Especially if they were to go like turn turn one amulet, turn two second amulet and try to combo. We have the way that we're not losing to that. And otherwise, I think this hand is pretty solid. So They do have Saga Amulet. And we drew the land. I think we might be force pitching Summoner's Pack to hit this stuff. And we just need to top deck any threat or like a Talari West. I don't think it's too hasty to go for that, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm about it. So. Because our opponent is clearly a little bit faster than us if we don't do this. So. We'll just have to hope we hit the uh, the threat. But this really significantly slows down our opponent. So this is why I wanted the third one on the board. So I don't know if my previous list was playing three forces or two, but Vesuva is not a bad one. I guess that means we can leave our bounce line in play and play around force a bit. So that's good. Always yield when we only have one amulet. No danger in that. Unless you were to draw a second one and then not realize that you need to unyield, then it would be somewhat dangerous. Playing around force by keeping our lands in play if at all possible. See if they have the force here in response to the amulet trigger. They do. That's uh, it's, uh, why we play around it. And they also pitch their threat. So we're both on the force game, but, uh, you know. <laughs> um, We're not... I think we are playing one Garen Brig. Let me check the deck list. Although... Honestly, we're, we'd have to top deck Garen Brig and Titan, so probably playing towards Garen Brig doesn't really make a difference, but I think I'm inclined to play Valakut here and pass. Thank you for the kind words in the chat. I try to do my best to explain the thought process, you know. Oh, another force is interesting. Our opponent is on zero playable lands. Whew, let's hope they draw a Saga, you know what I'm saying? Let's hope they go Saga Amulet and we force a second time and this one hard cast it. Whew, Summoner's Pact. We are one mana away from being able to make that happen. Uh, so let's just, uh, we'll chill. Actually, are we supposed to pick up Valkyrie here so we can hard cast force? Is that just like way overkill? I feel like that's overkill. So just keep the, the untapped land in hand. This also means that if they were to somehow, through some stroke of the imagination, be able to besage you our land, we could play untapped land and still tighten them, so... They do have Saga. Let's see if they have second amulet. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, uh, we're going to put a Titan into play. Green card? Not quite. Yeah. I. The only thing they could possibly do here is play amulet, grazer, and a bounce land. Second amulet, grazer, grazer, Titan. Some, something crazy like that. And uh, yeah, I'm not playing around it. So here's a Titan onto the battlefield. Honestly, I don't even know what the correct choice to grab with this titan is probably just talari west bounce land so we can kill them as fast as possible or i guess they could have double dismember or something and then that sets us up with a second titan i guess yeah i'm gonna go talari west uh simic and call it a day and we'll play basic forest heck yeah I tried to get the deck command to work, and it's not working. Let me see if I can copy the deck list manually. We'll yield on our, our opponent's in step here. I'll just post it. I updated it on Stream Decker and everything. It's just not working for whatever reason. So uh, here you go. Oh, wait. That does not appear to be the right... What am I doing? That is not even the right link. My apologies. There's the actual deck list. Our opponent has Slessing Sanctuary Pass. Cool beans. Well, uh, I feel like the easiest way for us to... <gasps> I shouldn't have tapped this way. Oh, well. We're giving our opponent an extra turn to to uh, be sad. Should have just transmuted and played Dryad here. I wasn't thinking. It's all good. We'll just swing, get Baseju, and bounce land, kill their thing, and be golden. More than golden. Just, like, absolutely destroying here. We're going to hit them in draw step here as well, so that they're more likely to have drawn a basic land, as if we weren't already far ahead enough, you know. Uh, 
I, I don't feel inclined to play anything here, so yeah, we'll just besage them and you know, boom. I don't know why our opponent is still playing this game, to be completely honest. Maybe even just setting up Sun Home would have been a faster way to kill them at this point. <laughs> yep. Straightforward and clean, just how I like it. Oh, they have Soccer Tribal there to, to trump block for one point of damage. Uh, yeah, let's get Dryad in, in this game. Put our opponent out of their misery. We're going to be tapping our battle cuts so we can hold up hard casted force if they happen to be able to force and kill our dryad and they're not just literally dead immediately boom we'll go to combat first that way if we get a valcut in play we can do more valcut triggers by playing a land afterwards here comes the force hitting our dryad Our opponent is on the think phase. They're like, how can I possibly survive this attack? Yep, there's the force. No surprises here. And we'll swing. And this time we will set up Sun Home, I think. Or are we still supposed to like continue playing around potential double dismember? I think playing around double dismember is the best choice. We'll get Sun Home Tolari West, and then we'll graze her in Sanctuary and be able to do both things. We'll Sanctuary pick up a different balance land so we can still pick up Tolari West if we needed to, I guess. Explore Legacy. See, I have very harsh feelings towards the Legacy format because I strongly oppose the stupid reserve list. And as long as the dual lands are on the reserve list, I don't think I'm ever interested in playing Legacy because I don't feel like that format has any room to grow since it's already stunted player-wise. So, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really about it. That's just me, though. And I guess we play Saga here because why not? And wait on the force in case they have amulet, and then we hit amulet and saga, and there's absolutely no way they can win from there. Like letting them untap a saga is probably not that dangerous. A tribe elder, of course. We'll just let their saga go. Not a big deal. Yep, just playing around double dismember. As as you commonly do, you know. Ironically, Dismember is a card that I don't think is particularly good in this matchup. It probably shouldn't be boarded in, but here it's like the only thing we lose to is double Dismember. I mean, even then we still set up a second Titan, so I don't really know what our opponent could possibly have here to to win. Even if they had, like, Deflecting Palm or something. I, I literally think our opponent is 0% to win at this point, so. Let's see what our opponent can muster here. Thank you for the follow, Zay Zay. Glad to see that the uh, notifications are working this time. <laughs> it took me what, three streams, four streams or something to actually figure out how to get that to work? Even though I knew how to set it up properly in the first one, it just wasn't working, so. You know, what can I say? OBS, Streamlabs, makes it difficult somehow. Is there a particular deck you'd like to see me play in Legacy SRAM? Play a Dryad, please. Besage your son home. You got it. You absolutely got it. Whatever you want. Reclaimer and Legacy. Oh, you mean like, is there like a specific Reclaimer deck or is that just lands? Because honestly, I don't know. I have no clue what Legacy actually looks like. So still holding the force because there's really no reason to do anything otherwise. Uh, not losing to our own pack trigger and leaving mana in play to be able to get another Dryad or even a Titan in play. I guess if we were going for another Titan, then leaving one of the Valkuts up would have been good, but honestly, there's no way they have the third force, right? Right? 
Couldn't possibly be. Could not possibly be. Eat transmute. Get the last remaining summoners packed. I mean, should we just play Titan instead? Because we this this is all we got. Nah, I'm going for Dryad every time here. Every time. And I guess we're supposed to hard cast Force now, because otherwise we may not have the mana to do so. Uh, okay. Kill that. Yeah, just that. I don't want to hit my own Dryad, thank you very much. Go to combat. Now they can't have double this member for whatever it's worth. <laughs> and we win. Okay, well, that took a little longer than it probably needed to, but that means that we are now 2 and 0. Oh, of course. And uh, it's not quite the time that I was planning on logging off here, but after this match, I definitely will cut it. So, dude, Tabernacle is one of the cards on the reserve list that makes it super egregious to try to play any land-based strategy in Legacy, right? It's like $1,300 or something, U.S. dollars, that is. Yep. Oh, yeah, there's absolutely no shame with playing with Chalklands. Honestly, I don't think there's any shame with just doing whatever the heck you want at your LGS. As long as you're happy doing it and uh, you don't mind whatever the result is that comes out of it, I think that you're in a good place to be. So we'll be on the play here against Blastoids. 5,000? Holy. Nope. Mm -mm. No, thank you. <sighs> yeah, last, last I heard... Tabernacle was like 1300. My opponent reveals Gigantha, so possibly Tron or a Mono Red Prowess deck or something like that. Or it could even be Gigantha Grixis Death Shadow. Uh, I think we're keeping this. We just need to top deck a threat. Surely we can top deck a threat, right? Do we want to waste our fetch land against Gigantha? There's a possibility that this paired with Dryad could be quite powerful later. And against Gigantha, there's. Unless they're playing specifically Mono Red, there's a low likelihood they have Blood Moon. I guess if they do have Blood Moon, then playing Besaju forces us to play out of Bounce Land, but we want to do that anyways, so I'm just going to lean on Besaju here. Check it out in my other monitor window. I believe you. I think that most likely it's because it's both a Star City Games price and probably New Mint, because it's really hard to find New Mint Tabernacles, unless it is played. Let me uh, yield to this turn for my opponent to be kind and gracious here. Yeah, TCG has it at like 3,000 or so. It's gone up since I last looked. Honestly, it does feel like Legacy is a little more popular now than it was like just half a year ago or even. But uh, our opponent leads on Dragon's Rage with Tarmogoyf and Bobble. Bloodstained Mire. Interesting. Could still be Grixis, believe it or not. No, not Grixis. They have Tarmogoyf. What am I saying? So it's Jun Shadow. Maybe Jun Saga Shadow or something like that? Or maybe there's no shadows. I don't know. Uh, either way, we're still uh, putting a Growth Chamber in play and putting a Dryad in play and setting up for a Titan that we're going to top deck expertly next turn after our opponent casts a discard spell and hits nothing. And we'll play Garandrig here so that even if they kill our Dryad, we can still play Bounce Land and cast the beautiful Titan that's about to come off of the top of our deck. Yep. Tabernacle of Pendervale. Heavily played, about 3000 bucks. So it looks like that 5000 figure might be a little more accurate than I gave it credit for. Allow four proxies. Honestly, I'm allowed... I, I'm, I'm for allowing any number of proxies. I don't think that it should really be a big problem. Honestly, I don't even mind if my opponents play fake cards against me. As long as I don't know, I'm happy. <laughs> dash a Ragavan, huh? Wait, they didn't dash it. They just played it. Old Border Ragavan. Haven't seen that one yet. We'll take our three and top deck Titan right now. <sighs> it's not a Titan. Deck that is not a Primeval Titan. Um, our opponent is showing us only Red Lands here as well. I highly doubt they have Blood Moon based on the Tarmogoyf that's in their graveyard, but you never know. We'll put our Misty Rainforest and play just in case. And uh, I think we don't want to play another land because they could potentially call against command to have his discard and we might want to keep this Besaju around. So I'm just going to play second Dryad here. What's their enchantment? Uh, this is not an enchantment, but is experimental synthesizer. It's an artifact. Has some sort of into the battlefield and die effect. Exile on the top card. When it enters the exile the top card and they can play it and then three to pop and make a two, two. And we don't really care about that at the moment, at least. So I swing with Dryad. 
I feel like probably not. We were going to want to block this Ragavan. They might be able to kill one of our Dryads, so might as well. Might as well chill. Opponent's just chilling over there. Just having a fun time. Oh, they do play Saga. So definitely no Blood Moons in our immediate future, I would say. Shrapnel Blast Dryad. Well, it's a good thing I didn't attack with the other one. Still blocking might be incorrect here. Because if we do top deck our Titan, then setting up Valcut with Dryad could be quite potent. So, like, losing our Dryad to a Bolt or Unholy Heat. I mean, right now they have four card types, so Unholy Heat still kills our Dryad regardless. But just, like, getting eaten by a Bolt here, I don't know. Titan doesn't necessarily just win by itself, although we get to attack. I mean, with Unholy Heat up, we probably don't. I guess if they Bolt here, they don't have Unholy Heat, so we can attack and then set up TUS and probably be in decent shape. I think blocking is better here, I think. It's kind of close, though. They have uh, Lightning Bolt Exiled as well, so... Too afraid of the monkey. Yeah, I think blocking is okay. I mean, making the extra token and exiling card from the top of our deck is unlikely to yield them anything other than the, the mana. Because, like, there's nothing they could hit off of us that they would want to play, really, but... I mean, we are losing our Dryad to Bolt, so technically this means our longevity isn't really there, but... I don't know. This also means that we have a window to top deck Titan, play an attack with it, and, you know, get T-West and Bog, and then their stupid Unholy Heats are no longer relevant, but as far as dead draws go, Urza Saga is kind of our best dead draw. Also, maybe we want to we besage you this Saga at some point. It's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, Haste and Titan would have been good, but that also requires us to draw it, and there's obviously universes where we don't draw it, so that's a very temporary gain. I'm not sure if it's really worth it, but we'll just untap here. Titan? Azusa? That is not a Titan, but uh, that's okay. I guess our play is Bounce Land, Azusa, Pass. Maybe... So then we only have three, so we can't... Oh, but our Azusa makes Baseju cost one, so we'll still be holding up Baseju for one and be able to activate Saga, so it's probably fine. We're definitely making a dude here. Just any time we could top deck a threat would be great, you know? Just any, any single time. Maybe our opponent concedes to this, thinking that we have clearly top decked a Titan. Looks like our opponent might just be on red-green, by the way, which is definitely curious. Here's Azusa. And a pass. Honestly, I don't know that we should be playing around this card, like Colgan's Command at this point. Maybe just play putting the land in the play is better. I mean, it's free not to, though. It's not like we get anything out of having a cavern in play here, anyways. I guess that means we could... Nah, I don't know. Keep M Misty on Cracked? I'll play Cavern on Giant just to summon Titan to the top of our deck, you know? Just gotta, gotta have faith. Gotta play the Cavern with intention, you know? Yep. I mean, the only reason why I'm not drawing is because I'm not professional enough with the deck, you know? Once you, once you get to a certain skill level, you, you never miss on your Titan draws. It's like, it's just something you kind of develop as, as you go. It's like only the top le level players have that skill. It takes a long time, you know? <laughs> Next time, name Titan to actually summon it. <sighs> if, if I play a cavern naming Titan and draw a Titan, that would be uh, absolutely bonkers. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Forgetting our Azusa value here. Although, actually, it doesn't matter, so. Yeah, we'll just hit this now. Should have hit this like a turn ago, but, you know, it's, it's all good. It is what it is. <laughs> Against a non-blue deck, do it for the meme. <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty funny. Make a token now because we have to if we don't want to crack our Misty. Galvanic Blast hitting us up top, huh? Okay. I'm willing to trade Construct tokens here. Our opponent is not. Right. Titan off the top would still be pretty uh, a decent draw, you know. Shrapnel Blast going upstairs, okay. 
Are we just dead? Is this is this lethal? This looks like lethal. Whew, it's definitely lethal. Cool. Would we have drawn it? The world may never know. Moto doesn't want us to know. It's okay. We'll just uh we'll move on. Insult to injury, that's okay. So against whatever our opponent is doing over there, endurance seems quite good against the DRCs and Targoids of the world. Explosives is kind of interesting. Hits their DRCs and Ragavans. Potentially artifacts they could have, since they do have Shrapnel Blast and Galvanic. They probably have artifacts, but then maybe it's just relying on Saga for that. I don't know. Radiant Fountain seems good. Tracker seems good. I doubt they have Blood Moon, so I'm not inclined to bring in Force. They... I don't know if we want Dismember here either, to be honest, because... I mean, it just hits Ragaman and DRC. Maybe that's good enough. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. We don't want Cavern in this matchup, pretty clearly. I mean, I know we're giving up the, the upside of being able to uh, summon a Titan to the top of the deck, but, you know, we'll just get there naturally. I want to cut Azusa because they just died of bolt effects and stuff, so they're really not that useful. Reclaimer is not bad here, actually. It's not great. It searches for Bog, which is kind of great. Saga's probably fine since they're likely not on Blood Moon. Yarenbrig is good. Just have too many cards. They're all good. Just hit submit anyways. Maybe we only want two Endurances. Three is kind of a lot. We don't want to draw multiples. Honestly, Endurance is not that bad, though. Reclaimer just dies to stuff, but, like, I mean, any any Galvanic Blast or Shrapnel Blast that's hitting Reclaimer and that is not hitting our face is still a win in my book, so, like, I don't really care that much. Drop a Dismember. Oh, that's a good that's a good idea. Maybe we just don't bring in the Dismembers. Life cost is too much? I don't know. I mean, them getting tokens, the, the clues off Ragavan is pretty big. And the fact that DRC has flying and we couldn't possibly block it unless we exile their graveyard anyways. Hmm. Maybe it's just not boarding and dismember. I mean, that makes the sideboarding nice and clean, to be honest. I kind of think maybe it's better to have a dismember over like a pact or something, but I just want to guarantee that we're top decking Titan, so I'm just going to leave the extra pack. If our opponent gets us with Blood Moon, I'm willing to accept that. I will admit, I was not expecting Shrapnel Blast. I was like, oh, Shrapnel Blast, okay. It made sense. I guess it works with Synthesizer too, now that I think about it. Synergy, you know. We have a Reclaimer Amulet Hand. Oddly, this hand would be better on the draw than on the play, but um, we can still play turn one Vesuva, turn two Bounce Land, and then turn three Amulet, Elvish Reclaimer, Vesuva copy their land. Yeah, finally a Reclaimer. And a hand that we might have to mulligan, though. I mean, this hand's really not that bad. It doesn't play anything until turn 3, though. It's really bad against Ragavan. Unless we top deck untapped green source and kind of immediately play Reclaimer, but then they just kill the Reclaimer anyway, so it's like, whatever. I kind of feel like we should mulligan this, actually. I'm gonna mulligan. Better hand, better hand. Ooh, double Reclaimer. I mean, no green sources, though. I mean, we get to play Saga and to copy Saga, so if our opponent doesn't just, like, Blood Moon us at random in their Saga deck, then we're not looking too bad. Turn 4 Titan with double Amulet at worst. If we top deck the Bounce Land, looking even better, we'll keep this. Probably bottoming... Yeah, I mean, it could just be the Redundant Reclaimer. If we draw any non-Bounce Land and, like, lose a Saga, then having double Reclaimer plays through, this, like, a, a, a removal spell letting us get a Bounce Land in play, which is not... The worst thing in the world? I think we're bottoming tracker here. Down green sources, yeah. <laughs> we'll play Saga Amulet, the classic I'm going to run you over amulet start, you know? And we'll just top deck the green source, like, easy. It'll just be right there, just waiting for us, you know? We'll top deck the non-existent bounce land that makes green green and play both reclaimers. How about that? Ooh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Wouldn't it be a shame if we were to able to were to be able to search for Paducah Bog at instant speed? Oh, and now we have a green source. We have a green source. Oh my. Oh, now we have a Besaju as well. We can copy their stomping ground, so I'm gonna take the pleasure of copying their green source. And we'll play Reclaimer, and this will set us up with <gasps> not red. 
No, this is not how it's supposed to be. If we untap with Reclaimer, we'll be able to search for the bounce land that we're missing, even if we don't draw it. So we're seeing the power of turn one amulet, turn two Reclaimer again, just threatening to guarantee us a turn three Titan in this case. <laughs> Green bounce land, let's go. We don't need it. We got this guy. And even if we don't draw it, we can still just search for map, I suppose. Probably not worth it. See if our opponent decides to kill the Elvish Reclaimer or loses to it. They're like, what is the worst that this Reclaimer can even do? I'll tell ya. Let me tell ya. Honestly, activating Reclaimer with double amulet is plus mana, too. <laughs> oh, they killed the Reclaimer. They found the line. Dang. Well, uh, we still would like the top deck bounce land. Green bounce land one time. Bounce land? Come on. Don't be stingy. Whew. Nailed it. Easy peasy bounce land. Just right off the top. Easiest bounce land of my life, really. Oh, got a five to make sure we're not losing to our own amulet triggers. Auto yielding. That would be not great. We get to leave our bounce land and play and pick up the Vesuva here, too. Whew. Value. And I'm definitely going for the kill here. Our opponent doesn't have anything. I'm saying it to their face boldly right now. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm drawing like a pro Titan player. And we win. Our opponent already saw enough, so. I guess we didn't technically have lethal there because we had Vesuva in hand, but, you know. Eh. Eh. That, that's my response to that. Engineered Explosives. Still probably not bad, but probably not worth it. Yeah, we'll just uh, hit submit. No thinking. It's not allowed. See, our Reclaimer did exactly what it was supposed to there. It ate a lightning bolt and made our opponent tap out, and then they were just dead to the Titan. I mean, I think opponents usually notice, like, that Vesuva is important, but the fact that Vesuva actually physically changes to the different land that it's copying when you play it makes it very easy to overlook the fact that it's not actually, like, a Slesnia Sanctuary or whatever in this case. It's like, you look at it and you're like, that looks like a Slesnia Sanctuary. It must be a Slesnia Sanctuary. And to be honest, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty logical, so I can't fault them for that. Um, this hand does not have the sauce. I think I'm only getting this. This hand has the sauce. We're keeping this one. Turn one, Saga. Turn two, Baseju Reclaimer, perhaps. Or turn one, Baseju Reclaimer. Turn two, Saga. Turn Baseju into second Saga and just, like, kill them on turn four. Pretty decent. Well, bottom redundant bounce land, I think. Probably turn one Reclaimer for this hand, I think. Especially if our opponent leaves on turn one Ragavan. If they, if they Ragavan and attack us, are we supposed to trade or not, though? That's the question. DRC. Our opponent doesn't give us the option. If they dash Ragavan, are we supposed to trade? I think leading on Reclaimer here makes sense. You'd trade. No faith. Oh, or we could just draw second Saga. Are we just supposed to go Saga Saga now? If we play Baseju Reclaimer and they just kill it, like we get super punished. I think I'm still playing Saga here. Too afraid of Ragavan? No such thing. There is no such thing as too afraid of Ragavan. I guess our opponent could have Alpine Moon, in which case we get absolutely wrecked here, but... Are we supposed to play Reclaimer on 2 to play around Alpine Moon? That is a question. I think the answer to that is probably not. I will just lose to Alpine Moon, and that, that's fine with me, I suppose. As fine as it can possibly be to get double Stone Rain for one mana, you know? Tarmogoyf. Okay. I mean, reclaiming a bog into play doesn't seem too bad here, but... Uh, our opponent on the no delirium plan. Great. Basically, I don't know. They could have Blood Moon. It is factual. Well, now we get to play a blocker and put Second Saga into play and guarantee that we're getting tracker value next turn if we're not just, like, you know doing Titan things. Or just playing Reclaimer. Probably playing Reclaimer is better than anything else. I don't know. Oh, no, no. Tracker... We'll have an amulet. So Tracker into Bounce Land, Float Mana, make a clue, pick up the Bounce Land, play Reclaimer is gonna definitely be the best choice. They Bolt Grazer. Okay. That's a hard way to do it. No Blood Moon one time. They, they, they wouldn't have it. They're playing a Saga deck. They, they can't... 
D- don't even speak those things. They can't possibly have Blood Moon. I don't want to worry about that. Now, nah, but for real though, I Spidey senses are, are telling me that this fetching for basics thing is probably not worrisome. I think they just naturally drew one of these, or like they knew they wanted to get red and they didn't want to fetch too low because they didn't need it or something like that. Or I'm just in denial, you know. They're trying to give the fear to me, but I will not catch the fear. Uh, definitely getting another amulet here and playing Tracker Forest Reclaimer. And we just have Titan next turn, and that is all she wrote. Titan with double amulet again. We can use Reclaimer to bog them at instant speed in case they have something like Unholy Heat. I only just now realized this. The Galv Blast, the Reclaimer. They are scared. They are so scared. And they should be, because if we didn't have the Summoner's Pack, we could potentially set up like a, a Tolaria West with the Reclaimer. So it's the right choice, but uh, I think they're still dead regardless. So Technically, Reclaimer was going to let us attack with two Titans there. I think. Are we chumping? 5-6. I kind of think we chump here, to be honest. Like, they could Nature's Claim our Saga, and that would be the worst-case scenario. If we take this 8 down to 4, they could have land... I don't know. Bobble. They can't have another Bobble. Like, Bobble Shrapnel Blast would kill us if they have a red land. How's it going, Hercules? <sighs> but what if our Titan doesn't get there? I think, I think I'm taking this block just to be uber safe. Is Reclaimer Amulet mean? Absolutely not. I don't know that it's better than playing a traditional amulet list, but as far as memes are concerned, no, 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 no. This reclaimer list is 100% serious. Whether it's better than a regular list or not is up for debate. That's definitely worth testing, but I am not playing this list as a joke at all. Two mana, Tarmogoyf, and they lose. Cool. <gasps> Besides, you know... This is, okay, we need to top deck a plus one ramp spell. That's what we need to top deck. Azusa, Grazer, Titan even works because we can then pack for the Grazer. All right, plus one ramp spell. Whew. Vesuva ain't doing it. Hmm. Are we supposed to pack for Tracker here so we can chump this? Or we can pack for Endurance, actually. Packing for Endurance seems pretty, uh, pretty legit here. Are we supposed to Vesuva basic force then so they can't, like, blow us out with something that kills a saga if we copy that. We're just gonna have... We still... We have to pay for a pact. I don't think we're even gonna be able to use the saga, although getting either a second amulet or a map into play could be quite important. I don't know, though. Draw from the clue. Now, I think I think going for the... I think going for the endurance makes better sense here. I guess we could clue play Bounce Land, pick up Basaji, leave Bounce Land Forest up, but then we lose to Alpine Moon. Honestly, I think it's just Vesuva Basic Forest and pass. And then we're gonna Endurance them after attacks. Yeah, but that makes us lose to a top decked Alpine Moon or like a any land destruction effect. Or is this way we're not losing to anything at this point? Yep. We can also just like play Bounce Land and Crack Clue next turn, even after we pay for Pack. So like, we're going to be getting there eventually. Not the biggest deal to me, so. Honestly, I'm not sure that Endurancing them here is enough, but we'll see. They have, we have... Enchantment land creature. So they'll have a 3-4 goif. Making tokens here. Makes sense. They probably drew garbage off the top. Hopefully. No Galv Blast, please. That's what we do not want to see. We'll let them search for their 1 or 0 Pyrite Spell Bomb. Okay. Yep, uh, you can attack. That's fine. Oops. Summoner's Pact. Misclick. I did not mean to cast that one. Endurance. 
We have four types in our yard. I think it's we just have to hit them, though. It doesn't make sense to do anything else. This also makes their potential unholy heats way better for us. We can either chump the goif or block the goif and take five down to four and be dead to Galv Blast. Getting a channeler out of play and then chumping goif and then hoping they don't top deck something relevant is like our only real option here. We kind of have to top deck the grazer. I don't know. I think I'm just blocking the channeler. We take five. Go to four. And the next turn, we chump this. Take one, two, three, four, five. We block Goyf. We take two here. The next turn, we have to draw a chump blocker for this. And we're taking two, three, four, five, six. Which is not technically dead if we top deck exactly Grazer. I think we have to block the Goyf here, actually. I think it's the only way that leaves us not losing to... I don't know. We have to draw Grazer anyways. Yeah, I, this is the only way that really makes sense to me. Okay. Grazer off the top one time. It has to be right now. We can't draw it off the clue. We'll pay. Map. That is not doing it. Um, all right. Let's see. We're taking lethal. Yep. Well, we tried. They win the match. Sad times. Sad times. Well, that means that we are now two and one. And I have bad news for you guys on Twitch. I got to go. I'm still doing classes. I got to wake up early tomorrow. And yeah, I have to do the responsible adult thing. And, and you know. <laughs> actually go to bed so well it was nice having you guys to join me here and for those of you watching on youtube you'll see me in three two one all right guys we are back here on a fresh new day to play the last remaining matches if you were part of the people on twitch who were watching last time then ha ha sucks to be you because we're here on a separate day and you guys probably aren't here anymore so get wrecked but regardless let's just jump in here for match four we are on the play, so just going to hit yes on that one. We have Saga Amulet, no bounce land, no threat. Hmm. We have Castle Garenbrig. That's kind of a bounce land, right? I mean, Saga Amulet is a decent opener, and any bounce land or threat lets us potentially unlock this hand. We could Saga for map for a bounce land. I don't know. I feel like we can actually do better than this. Well, um... This hand is distinctly lacking a bounce land. But we get to play turn one Grazer, turn two Dryad, which is pretty decent. If we draw any just couple lands, we'll be in decent shape. If we draw a bounce land, we'll be in perfect shape. But I mean, we could go to five and potentially find another turn one amulet hand that might actually have a threat. We don't have that terribly many draws at additional lands here either. I mean... This is a perfectly keepable six without the summoner's pack, though. I guess we have to keep this. I don't know that this is better than the first hand or not, but regardless, we'll play Vestige on green, so we have the freedom to play Cavernous Souls on whatever we want later. I'm probably going to be putting in the Besage here with the Grazer. Grazer in play. Besage in play. Everything's going smoothly. Now we just need to draw the Bounce Land. And extra land. Also take amulet into bounce land. That, that would be fine too. Island. Aether. Oh no. Oh gosh. This is this is merfolk. Hey there's an amulet. Uh, I think we're putting this on giants. Honestly the only stack interaction stuff they play. Main board typically is subtlety. I keep mixing subtlety and solitude up. I believe it's subtlety. And Cavern doesn't actually do anything against Subtlety anyways, but if we now draw a Bounce Land and our Dryad stays in play, we can go we can go uh, Amulet into Bounce Land, Bounce Land, Titan. The Merfolk matchup, I would say, is not that great. It used to be, like, fine because we could just expose this away their board and be cool, but now that they have tools like Tide Shaper that can kill our Sagas and, and you know, blank our Caverns and stuff, they also have usually up to four subtleties to put our titans on top of our deck 
So we can't just rely on Cavern to absolutely ruin our opponent's day. And I found that those just two changes in the more recent years have made this matchup a lot more annoying to face. Like, if we, even if we do top deck a bounce lane here, our opponent's probably about to untap, play a one drop and a lord. Then they'll just freaking subtlety, not, yeah, subtlety our titan when we cast it, assuming we draw the bounce lane, and then they'll just, like, kill us over, like, two turns. I mean, I don't know. In this case, we are actually playing a decent number of explosives, I believe. I think it was three. I haven't checked the list for today yet. We're playing a lot of explosives. So in theory, we should have the right tools for this matchup. But like I said, here's Tide Shaper. This one's denying us a green source. So in the case that we draw Boros Garrison, we can't do it. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll pass back. Oh, and that's not to mention, they also have the... I don't think they usually play it nowadays, but they, in the past, have played the two-mana Flash Merfolk that makes a creature lose all its abilities and taps the creature. That one, yep. <laughs> exactly that one. <laughs> Trickster also makes this uh, difficult for us because it just uh, stops... It stops Dryad Valakut shenanigans for a turn. It uh, taps our Titan down. Well, I mean, top taking the bounce lane is good. I can't deny that. We'll just hope that they don't have anything to interact here. I think I'm keeping bounce lane in hand as well. Now, we'll pick up the Boros Garrison when we go to haste, I think. Assuming that this Titan does resolve. It should, because I want it to. Okay, step one, Titan's in play. I mean, if we haste and get second trickstered, it's not great for us, but... I mean, I think I'm playing into it, considering they've already played one trickster. Honestly. And if they trickster the Titan now, then that means that next turn, we can potentially pack for Dryad and get some uh, Valka triggers. Oh, violent too. It's a trickster. I, I almost guarantee it. Okay. Sure. Also, they are now giving us the ability to attack for two with our Grazer. Is this an opportunity we should be taking advantage of? I guess so. Because we have to pick up land here anyways, and I wanted it to be bounce land, so... Get in there, Grazer. I guess there's a potential argument for picking up the Sanctuary and just leaving the activation so we can block and kill something, but... Eh, whatever. I don't really care that much. They're double blocking the Grazer? Wow. So I guess we get to trade this Grazer for a Trickster. I'm pretty okay with this, assuming they don't have the Flash Lord. We just got a free Merfolk Trickster out of our Slayer Stronghold. Uh, what? I mean, that was the... I did not expect that to be the case. And They must... I guess maybe they didn't have the Lord at the time they top-decked it. They just didn't have faith that they'd draw. I don't know why they would just sacrifice Trickster there. It's very strange to me. Unless then maybe they have a second trickster or something. Uh, I mean, we're definitely going to pack. Could just pack for second titan. Plays around trickster a little better, but it also means that we might just lose to our opponent's board. Third trickster, I guess I should say. I guess Dryad plays into Dismember. Although second titan doesn't necessarily not play around Dismember. We get to attack with both Titans. So this Titan ETB, if we got it right now, would get Valakut and, I guess, Talaria West. And we'd leave a white floating after playing Garrison to haste Titan with Valakut. We'd have T-West up. We'd attack with both Titans. Assuming Dismember, we get um, four lands. Picking up the T-West. Should be enough to... Well, one of them has to be Valakut. So, like, Valakut, Bounce Land... Bounce land, and any other land. Assuming both bounce lands are growth chambers, we should be able to transmute and play Dryad and get at least one Valakut trigger. I guess it could even be double Valakut, double bounce land. I think that works. I'm gonna go for that. This also plays around Trickster a bit better. This way we're getting more lands in play. Neither one really plays around Subtlety, but they only have one card in hand, so... 
we we make this uncounterable because we can. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, leaving white floating. The bounce trigger, I guess we pick up Baseju maybe to play around Mutable. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Just pick up Baseju. Play our giant. I guess we can also potentially play Azusa here. Get like Gruel Turf, Valakut, pick up the turf, play Azusa, then attack. Oh, but we need the T West though. Gruel Turf T West, play Azusa, Gruel Turf. I think that works. That gives us another two additional land drops. I think that's the probably the right choice. So we'll get T West. Oh, but we wanted to give Valka the haste here as well. I don't think mana will be a huge issue later on in this turn, so. There's probably a better way to have navigated this turn, but I think what we're doing is fine regardless, so. They have Vile. I wonder what 3-drop they have here. Nothing, okay. <laughs> Nothing is good! So they do have a trickster. So they're tapping one of the titans. Now what? Mm hmm. So if we attack, get double bounce land, pick up two other lands, play bounce land, transmute dryad land, then I think we can kill the lord and still be fine. We we have played a land this turn, so we don't actually get another land play unless we play Azusa. We get double bounce land, have five mana, two when we play Azusa, bounce land, bounce land, transmute, play land after Dryad, and we should be able to kill at least one thing. So we kill the Lord, we're taking two, three, four. Oh, we'll have two blockers anyways, though, so I think we're fine to attack here. Because we're going to be playing Dryad and Azusa, so. Should be fine, I think. Get double growth chamber, pick up any two lands, one of them being a bounce land that's not going to be untapped. Pick up Boros Garrison. Heck yeah. Actually, I think we might actually need specifically a green bounce land in hand, but uh should be fine. I guess I'll just cover it by picking up other bounce land because I want to be ultra safe. We'll play Azusa here. We'll play Sanctuary, pick up Simic, play Simic, pick up T-West, Transmute, second pack. <laughs> this is one of those convoluted games, you know what I mean? I think we are getting there, though. Get packed. We'll pack for Dryad, play Dryad, and then land to kill Lord. I guess we'll play Poseju so that even if our Dryad dies, that we can uh, pay for double packed with the green. And I think we're good to go here. I think. <laughs> Opponent says nice in the chat, by the way. I don't think they mean it in a salty way. And we win. Well, that worked out, I guess. 
So we obviously want explosives here. I don't mind tracker. I don't love it, but I mean we can potentially play tracker and other threats later, and they they'll have to settle to one of them. I don't know how much I love tracker here. I definitely love dismember though. Against them, bog does nothing, and saga is weak to tide shapers and spreading seas. So we probably are supposed to trim saga, I guess. Although the speed that Saga grants us is kind of nice, but I think just getting Tide Shapered out of the game is like not a realistic thing that we can put up with. Reclaimer is not great if we're not using Saga, though, in this matchup. I mean, it still lets us search for Valakut or T-West or Bounce Land or Cavern, although Cavern doesn't really matter against Subtlety, but yeah, I think we could probably trim some Reclaimers. Yeah, I think it's just the... Three Reclaimers. We have the one of, fun of, you know. Oh, I guess we weren't Radiant Fountain against them as well, potentially. Sorry, Reclaimer. It's one of, one of the non-Reclaimer matchups, in my opinion. Explosives. Five mana already. I mean, I'm happy with this hand. Definitely keep that one. Opponent mulligans to five, by the way. Uh, now we have Titan mana, so that's cool, I guess. Put in our growth chamber. Let's get the blue mana rolling early. I think our opponent will have trouble beating this explosives. <laughs> Tide shaper, huh? All right, well, we'll play forest, grazer, and a bounce land and pick up the simic. Since it's effectively the same as just putting another land into play. Haha! 1-1 one, one Tide Shaper. Take that! T-West? I mean... I'll just play that, I guess. Do we want to play explosives out here? I don't think so. I think it's better to just let the explosives chill until until our opponent commits into the board for it. It's just showing them we have an explosives will change the way they play. Although now I guess we have to consider paying for hex catcher tax, but you know. They could flash in a second hex catcher just to kill our grazer here, but if they do that, then uh we'll just attempt to explosives them, I guess. Or they could just have nothing and be attacking for no point at all. That That's fine too, I guess. Uh, Yeah, so I guess we're going Cavern naming Nymph and playing Dryad and seeing if they have the subtlety which they can easily hardcast here. I mean, we could always just play Explosives to not play into subtlety, but... So we play Explosives, they sack the tie, the tie Shaper, we pay the one, and we can still pop it on two for the Hex Catcher. Honestly, I think I kind of like playing explosives. Although, if that was the case, playing the cavern, well, no, that is what lets us pay through the hex catcher tax. Okay, uh, I think I'm just going to commit the dryad then. Although, I guess we want to make it uncounterable. I think this is the most efficient use of our mana. If they have the subtlety, they have it. But if they don't, you know, of course they have it. I get, at least now they're not going to subtlety our titan. Well, clearly we're putting this one on top, so. I can't play explosives now because they can counter it with hex catcher ability. Uh, so we'll just pass. Maybe they play a lord or two this turn, and then we just uh, we get to blow them out with explosives. <laughs> Spreading seas. Kind of annoying, but at least it dies to explosives on two. Second mute vault is probably not too much of an issue. Definitely going to block here. Do we sacrifice for the three points? I think maybe we do. Although, having a Grazer in play, or having both Grazers to just stonewall these Muta Vaults is kind of nice. As soon as they get a Lord into play, if we have an Island, they're not going to be able to block anyways, the Grazers. I'm going to take my three life while I can get it. 
This also means we could potentially draw another explosives and have explosives on one as an option. Seems like they might have another hex catcher, or they're trying to bluff it at least. I mean, I guess we're playing explosives on two here. Although if we want to... Yeah, we just have to do this. I don't think playing dry here makes sense. Although right now they can't actually... They can't actually settle to us. So dry it is guaranteed to resolve here. Hmm. The only thing that really punches us for playing Dryad and Explosives... Well, we can't play Explosives on 2 with Hex Hatcher in play. The only thing that punches, punishes us for playing Dryad instead is Lord, plus a way to stop our Titan. I don't know if I believe our opponent has that, though. I guess Dismember on the Dryad. I mean, even... And then Hold Up Subtlety next turn would be kind of annoying, but if they do that, then we can Explosives, I guess? I think it's probably right to play Dryad. I don't know for sure, though, to be honest. Oh, wait, hold on. We want to play land before we actually put the Dryad into play, though, to play around Dismember. So we'll play Growth Chamber. Pick up the Sanctuary. And then play Dryad. And then we'll play the Sanctuary again. Pick up the Cavern. So this leaves us open to play Explosives or Titan this upcoming turn, depending on how this turn plays out. They do have a second hex, hex catcher. And now it's committed. This makes our explosives on two better. Firing up meter vaults. Hopefully we're not just dead here. That would be awkward. <laughs> so if we block hex catcher and meter vault, we're taking 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which is not lethal. Um, yeah, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think this is fine. And then Titan just gets Valkus and kills them, right? I guess they could have exactly Dismember as their last card. Are we supposed to play around exactly Dismember? I don't think Explosives gets us out of this situation anyways, because we're just dead to the subtlety, so I guess we're just dying to Dismember. But uh, here's a Titan. Yeah, I think this is probably just lethal. So if we get double Valkat, play land, land, that's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight triggers, which is definitely enough to kill them. So I am going all in. I just assuming MTGO will allow me. I guess we got, oh, wait, 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 wait. I was going to say, I guess we got rewarded for playing Dryad last turn instead of Explosives. Although I think Explosives on 2 would also have been good. Play Cavern naming Human. Heck yeah. If I can type, my goodness. Oh, it didn't keep the auto targets. Oops. You know, I'm just going to click it. I'm not feeling it today. All right, well, I mean, here I was talking talking some nasty stuff about the uh, Merfolk matchup, and, ah, don't do that. And uh, instead, we're just uh, easy 3-1 and one now, so that's cool. Opponent says amazing in the chat. Um, that one, I think, probably is a little bit of salt. Anyways, let's jump in here for the last match. Of course, if we happen to win this match and go 4-1, and one, then we'll get more than our league value back. But even if we go 3-2, and two, I'm basically just getting everything I put into the league back out of it. So we're, we're good here no matter what. And as well, we've gotten to get the learning along the way. And it's obviously way too late for me to be recording because I just said the phrase gotten to get. What does that even mean? 
playing against Nurse Crabtree. I feel like I've heard of that. I don't know what it's from, though. Uh, yeah, we could definitely do better than Six Lands Dryad, I would say. Like, turn one Saga into Grazer, turn two, start activating it. I, I will take that for sure. And I guess we bought him Sunhome here? Or do we want the third Saga? I guess technically it's better to bottom third Saga if we happen to be playing against a Blood Moon deck, so that's what I'm going to do. We see Wooded Foothills. That that could be a Blood Moon deck. Not that I want it to be, but it could be. Bounce Land is not a bad addition to this hand. Now we just basically need to find Threat and we're good. And even if not, we still have infinite Sagas to get token value, so. Raugren Triome. So playing as a four-color deck, perhaps, but with no Companion? It's kind of a strange one. My opponent says, bro, I'm out here slipping my jimmy. I do not know what that means. Is it creativity, perhaps? We may never find out. Oh, they have ice to tap down our saga. Okay. Threat. Dryad is good. Uh, I guess we're playing Saga. Trying to get the second amulet or that expedition map out ASAP fast. Dwarven Mine. The cat is definitely out of the bag. All right, well, we're going to go get our amulet here. And we're going to play Dryad in such a way that we will be able to activate Saga and make a token to play around Archon. Keeping Bounce Land in hand here, I do believe. I guess there's a potential that we want to discard Basic Forest to Archon or something, so I'm just going to play out the Sun Home here. So we might want to Baseju the, uh, the Kiki Jiki enchantment. I forget what it's called. Or like a Clue Token or something. Leyline Binding. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we might want to Baseju Leyline Binding. <laughs> sure. Now the question is, are we supposed to make a Saga token or just besage you the binding on our opponent's instep here? Looks like we might be getting single creativity here. I mean, we definitely need to top deck this threat. That's for absolutely certain. See what their big dude is. Of course, it's Archon, so we'll stick with the plan. And then on instep, if we put Dryad in play now, it's not like it's letting us transmute. I guess we could draw a threat and get second amulet. I mean, there's really no reason not to besage you the ley line, though. Although, I guess if we miss on our draw here, then we'd have to sacrifice the Dryad to Archon. Let's see, if we draw threat. We can get double amulet in play and still play it if we make a construct here. If we draw Talaria West, I guess, we would have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. We should be able to transmute. I guess if we besage you this, we have one bounce land. Bounce land is nine, but not enough blue. You bounce land, then besage you? I don't know. I think we're fine to make a token here. My instinct tells me we'll have enough mana. Well, 
Well, that is not anything particularly good. So I guess we'll just make another construct here. And get... Are we supposed to just get second amulet here and hope to top deck a threat? We could get map, play vestige, blow up the binding, play bounce land, crack map immediately, and then we don't have a, a card to discard in that case. I guess we could play bounce land, pick it up, besage you, play bounce land again, and discard the vestige. I guess that's the the big biggest line, I think, to victory. So we'll do that. Not attacking for four into our opponent's Archon here, of course. Hit this Ley Line. <laughs> our opponent gets a 1-1 here, I suppose. Play Sanctuary. Pick up the Sanctuary. And map for, I guess, Solari West? Pass. How's it going, Bash? You're here on the very final match of this league, believe it or not. Currently 3-1, and one, playing against Creativity. This is game one. And now we have Crumbling Vestige to discard to this uh, eventuality that was about to happen. So second Amulet... May or may not actually do it for us here, to be honest. Guess we'd just like to draw Titan at this point. Although our opponent might have something like Remand, I don't know. If I get to see me live, yeah. <laughs> if I could make like a very stable, like consistent stream schedule, then I would, but the truth is I can't do that, so. Yeah, I don't think that Prismari Command is one we can beat here. <laughs> so you out of med school now, then? Oh, yeah, we d absolutely could not beat this, so... That's what happens when your opponent gets to draw a couple extra cards and, you know, taxes your resources and all that, so... We'll bring in explosives so they can't just creativity us straight out of the game. I've seen some people bring in force for this matchup, which I don't really understand. Mm, computer science. Yeah. I mean, school is rough for everyone, just to, just to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think it's honestly just explosives. Like, So I what I was saying is I've seen some people bring in forces for... The three mana enchantment, the... Why can I not remember what it's called? But that's the only thing that Force really hits. And they mostly go off of just the little creatures. I guess we could dismember one of their creativity targets, so maybe that's a reason to bring in Dismember. Bog is only good if they're playing Persist, which I don't know if our opponent would be playing or not. We did see, I think, a Blood Crypt in game one, I think. I'm not going to want Cavern here, unless our opponent has Remand, which they did not show us. They could have Remand, though. Reclaimer is good if they have, like I said, Persist, and we need to be able to search for Bog at instant speed, but otherwise, Reclaimer is not fantastic. Like, if we search for Sagas and they just get hit by their Saga removal. I mean, Reclaimer is kind of slow in general. Yeah, yeah, we're playing Reclaimer today. I've never had to sideboard with a Reclaimer list against... Creativity, now I think about it. Reclaimer is a body to sacrifice to the uh, ETB ability as well. I think we're leaning on the side of not playing around counter magic by siding out Cavern. I think I'm going to board out Bog until I know for a fact that they're... Actually, we're probably keeping Reclaimer, so there's probably no reason to board out Bog, even if they're not playing the Persist package. Zeus is not bad. I think we could trim one, though. Trim one Grazer, and uh, I think maybe trimming Saga is a little too much. Maybe it's just one Reclaimer, like, we can't afford to draw multiple of them. I guess, I don't know. Three Dismember. It might seem like a lot, but honestly, this is a bad matchup, and if we can do anything to stop them from getting multiple Archons to play, it's, I think that would be pretty decent, but I don't know. You're, you might be right. 
it is a miserable matchup for sure. Uh, yeah, this hand's not doing it for me either, so I'm just going to mulligan. Well, double amulet. I guess we have dismember to interact. Although, maybe it's right to be putting dismember on the bottom with this hand. Reclaimer will search for our bounce land if we draw a green source. So, probably want to keep Reclaimer. I'm going to keep this because I think that we probably have to. I think maybe it's just Dismember here. Packing for Azusa or Dryad could be relevant with this hand, or even just packing for a second Titan is, like, good. Assuming we're able to, you know, draw the bounce land. Lost two or three five O's to this deck. Yep. Yep, sounds about right. Sounds about right. Alright, green land for Reclaimer is good. Bounce land is obviously great. They always have the Force of Vigor. Hopefully they don't. We haven't seen them on green land so far, I don't think. I mean, I'm sure they have Ren, though. Do they even play enough green cards to support Force? <laughs> Anytime we could draw land would be great. That, that's all I'm going to say. Although now if we draw bounce land, we can play amulet into bounce land pack for anything and then get Titan into play. <laughs> or just third summoner's pack. That's that's cool too. Who who said that three summoner's pack wasn't too much? Maybe we can draw the fourth one. They have claim. I mean, they have besagers also. And here's a green source. Bounce land off the top potentially just wins. Bounce land? Any, t any, any day now. Are they going to ice this? Uh, okay. I don't think that does anything, but okay. Bounce land? Them icing was not... Oh, come on, dude. Well, we'll just uh, pass. Yeah, that ice was not the best ice I've ever seen. Just patiently waiting for this bounce land, you know. When we draw it, it's going to be freaking Boros Garrison. See, if we still had Dismember and they didn't ice our Talarius, then we could potentially just, like, stop their combo right here and right now. I mean, honestly, if we get to do our thing, we're just going to win. So I think we're discarding Reclaimer at this point. Although I guess if we draw non-bouncing green source, then they attack and make us sacrifice Reclaimer anyways. Yeah, not with Archon in play, unfortunately, at this point. Bounce land. Okay, well, not bounce land. We'll, uh, you know, we'll just live with it, I guess. This is our reality now. <laughs> Punish says brutal dude, I'm sorry. Slam, though, it's all good. I guess at this point we're pitching a pack. Since uh, Azusa is one of the things we would potentially <laughs> pack twice and upkeep to thin. That's not a bad idea, actually. I didn't even think about that. It's probably the right choice. Or they could creativity Archon into another Archon. Of course. What is going on? Magic Online might be crashing here. No? Discarding Titan here, probably, actually, because double packing thins more than a single pack. So I think we actively want to just... I think we actively want to stop on upkeep and double pack here and just pitch the extra Titan for sure. Double packing on upkeep is... That is some, that is some sick tech. I really like where this is getting where this is going. We'll get one dry out, I suppose, and another Titan. Alright, deck. We need to see what well, we need to see. It needs to be a green bounce land. One time. Drum roll and Whoo! Okay, 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 okay. We're in business. Okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Your trick might have just won me this game. Assuming I don't mess this up. I guess we play Azusa so they can't just like force Dryad and Amulet and just like kill us immediately. <laughs> I 
<laughs> what is happening? This is the best way to win. I don't know what you're talking about. They just apologize too, you know? All right, Titan number one. <laughs> I cannot believe this is actually working. That's the crazy part to me. Sanctuary Valcut, I guess. Works to me. This is quite a way to win this game if this is how it's going to go, you know. We'll pick up Talaria West. Play Titan. Haste off of... I mean, I guess we still have to get Boris Garrison here. Well, no, wait. We can do Crumbling Vestige and Slayers, I think. Crumbling Vestige is three. We have one floating. Yeah, that should work. If we're getting technical about it. So Slayers. Vestige. If they had Force, they would have already done it, so... For a second, I thought I stacked the triggers incorrectly here, but it doesn't matter. So, we're good. Alright, we'll make our white mana here. And our red mana here. Target the other Titan. Go to combat. This is crazy. I cannot believe this is actually working. Let's get all the... All the Val cuts in play. Show our opponent what's up. Send a couple at the Archon. Actually, can we afford to do that? We're getting two more lands, and then we have more land drops remaining. Yeah, let's just kill this Archon. Just because we can. And now we'll go all upstairs with the rest. With Black Force. <laughs> You know, if we lose the Black Force, all I can say is we deserve it at this point, so. Opponent concedes the game. Okay. Okay. I, I'm inclined to just hit Submit. I mean, I don't think the third dismember is too much. Like, we can always bottom them on, like, mulligans and stuff. Is it better to draw dismember than, like, an extra reclaimer or something? I think we actively want Dismember here. I think our opponent will not be expecting it, and they have already shown us a proclivity for creativity on one. Our opponent says, crazy, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, this hand's great. Again, we're in the hoping for a bounce land category, but we'll definitely keep this for sure. Praying for no force. We might even lead on Grazer into Saga instead of Saga Amulet, just to... Try to lessen the impact of force just a little bit. And also not expose our amulet to like a wear and tear type effect or something like that. Sandbag the amulet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Opponent mulligans to five. This is the worst way for them to go. Although the game's not over yet. <sighs> that's a second amulet figure. Um, um... Still sandbagging them, I think. If we draw Bounce Land, we do not get to tighten this upcoming turn. Because Double Amulet into Bounce Land, Dryad leaves one floating, Bounce Land's up to five, so. Just Saga past it? You wouldn't play the Grazer? I could kind of see it. I think if we just play Saga and Pass, they're not likely to cast a Force anyways, so... I guess technically, Grazer does let us cast Titan this turn if we hold back on it. No, that's not entirely true, because we'd have to play Saga Amulet for that. I think maybe just playing Grazer and a Saga is probably better than playing Saga and Passing. I think. And we draw the Bounce Land. Interesting. 
I mean, we can continue to sandbag these amulets. We're about to search for another amulet with Saga. Let's see, if we float with Saga, get second amulet, play amulet, and third amulet. I guess we could play amulet and then bounce land immediately. No, but that would leave us short. If we play another amulet now, we get absolutely got by force. But if we don't, then they could potentially besage our Saga. But I think we have to play amulet here. Besaju lets us play around Leyline Binding. We could play Bounce Land Amulet here, and that's not the worst. I think it's Bounce Land Amulet, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go Bounce Land Amulet and keep the Besaju in hand. I don't see a reason to... to just drop the Besaju here. <gasps> oh, don't want to do that. All right, we'll see what's up. It's now or never. We get to double tighten them next turn, assuming all of our stuff lives. Tap Sacred Foundry. And possibly an ice. Well, double tighten does play around ice, I will say. Are they going to ice the saga here? <laughs> Or we could just draw a fourth amulet. Um, what what does that do? All right, so we're definitely putting an amulet in play. The safest possible thing to do here is to ju just play Growth Streamer immediately and get all of the triggers. I think if they force us at if we have amulet on the stack and then we play Bounce Land, we then have to play Dryad, which they could subtlety maybe. I don't know if there's anything even to play around here. Um, I don't see any harm in playing the fourth amulet. Unless maybe they have double saga. I don't, not double saga, double force. If they have double force and playing growth chamber now, I don't know. I have no clue. I don't see any downside to bounce land first, to be honest. I think... It feels safest to me, but honestly, I don't think it matters whether we play Amulet before Bounce Land there or not. If I'm being completely honest. This seems like it plays around something. I guess they could have potentially had Besaju on the Bounce Land there. That would have been kind of sad. Plays around Spell Pierce. Ah, that's interesting. We'll play the third Amulet, I suppose. No, I mean, playing around Spell Pierce is, is definitely real. Play Dryad into Bounce Land to cast Summoner's Pack around Spell Pierce also. Four amulets. <laughs> Why not? I don't think I've ever done this combo with four amulets in play. I don't... Honestly, I don't even know if there's anything special we can do with four amulets. I guess technically we can attack with four titans if we had a way to get that many into play, but we don't. It's 9, 10, 11. So with 9 floating, we can... I mean, we're going to have infinite mana here. I'm just going to float white, I think, with these two, and then pick up the forest. Yeah, we're going to at least go through another two Talari West, assuming we have enough summoner's packs, which I will check. Yeah, Dios plus bounce makes 12 mana. What? <laughs> okay, so we have two TOS and plenty of summoners packs. So we're going to put at least three Titans into play. Maybe floating all this white was useless. I have no clue. I've done this countless times with two amulets. The third amulet makes it very trivial, and the fourth amulet almost doesn't matter, I think. Just making infinite mana here. Don't... Oh, and we win. Cool. Well, <laughs> you know what that means. That means that we ended up four and one. Yeah, fourth is just overkill. Honestly, we really didn't get to utilize Reclaimer that much. There were a few spots where having Reclaimer 
was going to allow us to get to Titan or to have access to Bounce Land, and then we just happened to draw the thing we were missing anyways. But if we didn't, then Reclaimer would have been crucial in those games. I think Reclaimer is just a good card overall, and clearly this list is able to compete. So, I, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. I, I am actually considering potentially just cutting the castle. The idea initially has been that Reclaimer can switch like a forest into a castle for ramp. But honestly, the more I've played with this list with zero five stones, the more I'm just like, Reclaimer should fetch Saga every single time, unless it's setting up for something specific. I really like Reclaimer. I don't know if it's better than a traditional amulet list, but yeah, anyways, I guess I should round this up for the YouTube folks so I can stop recording. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you guys in the next one. This is Redface Menace, signing off.